Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. You're watching 60 Cycle Hum. And in this video, I'm gonna explore a little piece of equipment that Sweetwater sent to me, the Tech 21 Sansamp PSA 2.0. So this is a product provided sort of situation from Sweetwater. Thanks Sweetwater. But anyways, it comes in this cookie tin sort of thing. There's a power supply in there and there was a manual in there. I have to be honest with you guys. I tried to film an unboxing yesterday, a first impression sort of thing. I tried to fly by the seat of my pants and just like Icarus, I ended up in the ocean dead and drowning with melted wings because uh, I didn't know what I was in for with this. I was expecting something different. I was expecting this to be one of those kind of all-in-one mini floorboard things that's got drive, delay, reverb, modulation, some amp and cab sim sorts of things. That's not what this is. This is way more specific than that. And those things are great, but this is a, a totally different beast. This is an amp builder. This is a pedal that you use to build amp sounds. You can use it to simulate existing amps like Fender sounds, Marshall sounds, Mesa sounds, Voxy sounds, things like that. Or you could create your own sounds because the ingredients are there. This is a, a tone kitchen. This is an amp tone kitchen that we're dealing with. So anyways, let's get into it and show off the nitty gritty here. I'm running this direct. It's meant to be kind of like a direct solution into front of house. You can run it into amps. Um, I'm not gonna do that because I wanna show off its direct sound because that is its, you know, that's its key function. So anyways, I've got it on a Fender Twin preset right now, preset number 15, and I have the knobs turned to reflect the settings. Uh, by the way, if I turn the knobs, that number flashes when I get too far to the left of the preset, and that number flashes when I get too far to the right. So you can see I can dial in the exact knob settings for each preset to find out you know, what that recipe entails. So anyways, here it is. Here is the sound of that Fender uh, Twin simulated preset. That was the middle position. Here is the neck. And here is the bridge. Now I'll show you kind of what the bypass signal sounds like. Patch number 00 has nothing on it. Nothing is happening right now. This is just the raw guitar. Go back to 15. This has a cab sim on it right here. We'll turn that off. You'll see this will turn from pink to red. For this uh, sort of setup, it definitely sounds better with that cab sim on. All right, let's go through the controls. You have a basic post level, you have a trim control, which is a global kind of volume tweak for all the patches at once. You have a post high and low EQ control, and then you have the important stuff in this little Tetris L right here. You have your pre-gain. This controls how much signal is being blasted into the drive section. Then you have buzz. This is your low EQ gain. This shapes the gain as it affects the low EQ. This is the punch. That is the mid gain EQ. You get it. You get what's going on here. And then the crunch is, of course, the high gain uh, EQ control. And then drive is kind of a simulation, an approximation of turning up your amp, getting that power amp distortion with, a, uh, with an amplifier. So anyways, let's start tweaking stuff so you can hear how this is all affected. You can see on this setting, the mid gain is all the way down. Let's start off by changing that. Yeah. 
There's a big character difference between the stock setting there. And pushing those mids, even a bit. Check out the range of the buzz control. In here, there's a bit of like a gainy low rumble there. You pull it back and it gets really clean. And now the crunch. The crunch is pretty dang high. Let's put it higher. The sparkle. Damn, it gets dark quick. the gain control. Let's push this thing. something kind of flat here and we'll show off the drive control back to the bridge pickup I'll turn it back up Kind of shows off the ingredients we're working with here to kind of tone shape and craft the sounds that might be in your head that you're trying to find. Uh, to me, it's a kind of old school but really effectively unique way of dialing in amp simulation. I'm so used to the modern ways of doing it, of having you know a digital interface where I'm dragging and dropping you know different amp and cab and mic simulations like, oh, I'll drag in a uh, Fender amp and then I'll throw on a Marshall cab and I'll throw on a ribbon mic over here and a dynamic mic over here. It's more simple than that. It's analog. It's not a digital effect. It has digital kind of programming to save presets and whatnot, but the signal path is actually analog on this thing and it's giving you these 
tools across this range of knobs here to use your ears to dial in sounds that might be in your head or might be on an album or might be in an amp that you already own or wish you could own. I think there's something really fun about that. It's a different kind of experience versus dragging and dropping, you know, patches and whatnot. So anyways, let's get into some of the presets. There's a whole list of 50 factory presets in the back of the manual. And uh, let's just see how they did. We'll go back to one. Uh, basically, one through nine is Marshall sounds, then it gets into Fender styles, then Mesa Boogie styles, then bass styles. Ugh, gross, right? And then miscellaneous styles. We'll check those out. There's some weirdness in there. All right. This is a Plexi. Let's try driving the gain on that a bit more. That sounds nice to me. That's the JMP one. Just high gain is what this is labeled. Sounds like what I did earlier by tweaking that uh, that plexi channel. Six is blues breaker. Number seven is just called Hendrix. <laughs> Did I sound like Hendrix? No, I did not. I mean, the tone might have, but my playing obviously does not. Uh, Van Halen 1, here we go. I try. And then into the Fender sounds, this is Fender Classic Clean. This is called the stock setting. Honestly, kind of reminds me of my Princeton. This is called BB King. Let's go to the neck pickup. I've never uh, been known to play like B.B. King, but it kind of has that bluesy sort of grit to it. All of this again, all of these presets are just different settings across these knobs. It's, it's honestly pretty wild. Nothing, no sort of like code changed or anything like that. It's all analog. I'm honestly kind of impressed by the whole system. SRV sound. This is called funk. Fender champ sound. That twin, this is called Super Bright.
that might be my go-to, you know, for a surf sound. If I threw some reverb on that or something. 17 is classic rock, whatever that means. Maybe not. There's a nice twang to that. Oh, that's it. That's the surfy sound right there. Ooh, I like that one. I should circle that in the manual. 17 is for me. Super clean. Jazz. So dark. All right, now we're into the Mesa boogie styles. Mark one. This is called Metallica. It's the only Metallica riff I know, and I probably mangled it. Santana. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna get this. I did it! <laughs> Clean makes a boogie sound. That ain't bad. Kind of sounds like a, uh, what is it called? Kind of sounds like a basement. Rectifier. Very pop punk. Sort of tone. Tri axis. No idea what that means. This is the lead preset. Rhythm. A little muddy for my taste. Too much gain. Number 28. This is called Mutant. This is where bass guitars live. Ah, so boring. I tease. <laughs> Maybe I should give this to Steve when I'm done. Let him uh, use it for bass stuff live, see what he thinks. All right, now we're into miscellaneous styles. This is kind of funky, weird territory because it calls out various pedals. Like this first one is supposed to be a fuzz face. I kind of hear what they're going for there, but no. <laughs> this is supposed to be a triangle muff. No. This is supposed to be a tube screamer. No, I don't. I don't think so. Tech Twenty One. This is supposed to be an MXR. Uh, distortion plus. That's not bad, but you know, the distortion plus is a close cousin of the uh, DOD 250, which is kind of a crispy amp style overdrive anyway. So of course this would probably be able to do that pretty well. Tele simulator, a Telecaster simulator. This is kind of nasty. American Woman. 
Here we go. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. I know how to zero three five. No big deal. Uh, forty six is Pantera. <laughs> I don't really listen to Pantera, so I have no idea how to even do whatever they do. <laughs> People are mad at me now. I can feel it. Uh, 47 is a high watt. Forty-eight is an AC30. I'm a little surprised there's only one Vox preset because I feel like that mid punch control there. Uh, lives in that voxy sort of territory. 49 is a speaker simulator. All right. And then 50 is another bypass. Well, I did it, guys. <laughs> I showed off the whole thing. I mean, I didn't get into saving things. I didn't get into the MIDI control on the side because I'm not a MIDI boy. For the most part, I've dabbled here and there, but I honestly, I don't like doing many stuff. But anyways, um, that's pretty much all of it. Uh, I think it demonstrates a really interesting range of possible tones. At times, I feel like I need a noise gate in there. I kind of wish they had built in a modern noise gate because uh, it does get kind of buzzy. But I think um, this could be an important, a powerful part of someone's, you know, front of house, direct recording kind of rig, uh, maybe even just a headphone rig, be a good headphone amp or, you know, good amp at the end of your pedal board. And then you run front of house or you run headphones or whatever you need to do. It could even sound great in front of amplifiers and stuff like that. You can turn off the speaker simulation and, you know, just turn it into a dirt box because this shaping right here, that three band shaping is pretty dang powerful. It gives you a lot to mess around with. And you have pre-gain and post-gain and a high and low EQ here and everything else. It's kind of compelling that, you know, this older technology, this technology from before I even played guitar in the early 90s, can still be interesting to someone like me now. There's something there in that kind of three band gain shaping EQ kind of concept. What do you guys think? I want to know what you think down in the comments. Do you have any experience with the PSA 1.0 or previous versions of this? Do you have experience with this version of this or any other Tech 21 stuff? Um, this is actually the first Tech 21 product I've owned. I've played with other people who are using them, but uh, I'm pretty impressed. It seems solid. I like the case. I like the size, the weight. Seems innovative. I don't know. <laughs> I'm looking forward to reading everyone's comments. So anyways, huge thanks to Sweetwater for sourcing me with this. Uh, I love working with Sweetwater. Great people over there. Uh, get yourself a sales rep at Sweetwater and they'll be your new best friend. They'll send you some candy when you order something. If you're shopping for this or anything else right now, use the link I have down below. And you know what? Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, dislike, leave me rude and nasty comments. Support us on Patreon. You know the whole deal. Buy a shirt if you're naked and uh, go check out our social medias. We've got links down below for Facebook, Instagram, Discord. We're on Discord now. And what's the other thing? I can never remember. Oh yeah, stay grounded. Bye everybody.